round two. Let's see if the casino can find its legs. Is the ace of Vegas, the ace of Vegas. We open up with Tim and Tom. Well, Tim really, Tom is just kind of there, discussing whales. So a quick Vegas lesson for those who aren't initiated. Whales are the Vegas host slang for VIP high roller customers, basically customers who have big bankrolls that like to make big wagers. They account for about 25% of a hotel casino's gambling revenue, so it's very important to attract them to a casino and keep them happy. The problem is, most of these guys like to stay on the strip because there are parties, pretty girls, shows, great food, and a lot of shiny stuff to keep them interested in between table games. So to compete with that, Tim introduces a new variant of the game Craps. The rules are the same, but the payouts are structured more to favor the player, meaning that a whale could potentially win a lot more money at the Nugget than they could on the strip. These new crap odds and our aggressive limits draws a guy like Jeff Mills downtown, and it really is maybe the only thing that gets guys like that off the strip. Now that's a really good intro. I've learned more about marketing, a few statistics, and we've got a business plan. Now that's more like it. Good job, the casino. Tim puts his tactic into play and convinces a Mandalay Bay customer, a young real estate tycoon by the name of Jeff Mills, to play. A, a new policy in our, in our dice pit, so we upped our, our odds to 6, 8, 10, instead of uh, what was used to be 3, 4, 5. Oh, those are, those are, uh, those are great odds there. Um, definitely bigger than uh, what I'm used to. So far the episode is starting nicely and it's developing a good formula. Half the episode this go around will be dealing with actual casino operations and then probably a fair amount of dealing with customer experience in more Vegas porn. Sounds pretty reasonable so far. <laughs> and of course, because Jeff Mills has a name, he gets a story. Instead of getting a proper lesson about how important this guy is to the budgets and what they can do to make him happy and attract his money, we decide to pop into the limo with Jeff Mills. Alongside his brother Brian and his girlfriend Kristen, they are immediately unimpressed with the idea of hitting the golden nugget because it's an old people casino. Where did you come up with that idea? Uh, there a lot of old people at Gold Nugget? <laughs> yeah, that was my dad's favorite it's place. It's like Denture of the Week Club. But they're going to give it a go anyway, which, admittedly, was a thought I kind of shared during my first trip to Vegas, too. The strip is young and happening. Fremont was for retirees, reliving the glory days. I learned quickly how wrong I was, and hopefully the Mills party will do the same and have as good an experience as I did the first time I went to Fremont. Bottom line is this, we're going to have a good time down here. Just keep the booze flowing. So the Mills family arrives and gets straight to work. They put money down and play some craps, I guess. He doesn't even really need to do it. Tim kind of comes down to meet the Mills family as well on their sporadically private table. And so does Tommy. And no, it's not Tom Breitling, the owner. It's a young man by the name of Tommy Sundstrom. He's a blackjack dealer. But he also gets a name card now, so there's going to be a little more story involved with him too. Evidently, he's the son of John Sundstrom, the VIP host that's hosting the Mills family. You're John's son, right? Yes, yes ma'am. Your dad is John? Yeah, yeah. John Sundstrom, our host? Yeah. That's all we hear about him, though, because Matt Dusk is doing another show at Zach's. But this bit isn't about him. We've actually got more guests. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, Matt gets into another spat with Joe or whatever, but it doesn't really amount to much, so let's just go ahead and focus on the new people entering the episode. How you doing, guys? Nice to see you again. Welcome back. Now these folks are just regular-ass guests, as far as I can tell. Draco Malfoy shows up with two attractive women without names. Okay, well, they all have names, but they don't interact with anyone otherwise. They're just labeled as swingers. Yeah, and okay, I'm starting to see a real pattern here. So apparently the show isn't terribly interested in how to operate a casino, despite being called the casino. And all the best parts of the casino are following the guys who bought this giant hotel casino and want to show us how the casino works. Or apparently Fox thought that was boring, so they feel the need to focus on the guests, half of whom are focused on getting a date, and the other half are explicitly there to watch TV, if you know what I mean. Now this threesome is apparently looking for a couple of extras to add to their group, because the first thing I think about when I go to a Vegas dinner lounge is recruiting strangers for some sort of orgy or something. And of course this new couple that they prey upon gets names too, so I guess we'll be following them for a portion of the episode as well. Chris, we won't find out immediately because early 2000s reality show ADHD kicks in and takes us back to the actual casino again, which I'm thankful for because I really want to learn more about the Golden Nugget and its daily operations. That's the reason I'm watching the show. Hi, you can't cook for all your money tonight. You do realize that, right? 
So we're back to Jeff Mills, and he's losing his shirt. Jeff's wife steals his money while literally claiming not to steal his money. Though I guess if they're married, then whatever. It's her money too. I'm sure it comes out of the same bank account, so no big deal. I think Mrs. Mills thinks that Jeff has some sort of gambling problem, but that's not going to get addressed here. Sometimes I tend to take some of his money and like hide it in my purse so it doesn't end up at the casino as a deposit. Some people think I'm stealing his money, but it's not that. I'm just trying to look out for him. Meanwhile, oh, we're back to the swingers, I guess. Okay. Meanwhile, the couple that the swingers targeted talk about going to a swingers party. I'm going to fast forward through the pretense here because we all know what they're going to do. The husband is down, the wife isn't, but they decide to go anyway just to, quote, check it out. Can you see yourself doing something like that? I can see myself checking it out. Anyway, back to Jeff Mills and his party. They're still getting their asses kicked. So Tom tries to rescue him, so he'll decide to come back despite getting their asses kicked. Sounds reasonable. Kristen somehow lost her purse, too. So in addition to all the money they lost to the casino, she can't find the rest of their gambling money. This apparently isn't a big deal because they just tell security to go figure it out and go about their day. Probably because Kristen has no idea what the purse looks like and describes it as generically as possible. What did it look like? The purse was a matching wallet. What color is it? The, it's is brown. It? Okay. All right. I'll have him go look for it real quick. It's not always yeah. money in it. So Jeff goes to play more cards. Jeff's store is basically like Chevy Chase in Vegas Vacation, only he's rich enough to the point where it doesn't matter. He just had kind of a sucky night. So of course, Jeff withdraws some more money and starts playing again. He's doing okay, but then there's a fight about Baccarat. You see, the thing about Baccarat is it's kind of a lame game in some circumstances, so when you lose, patrons are allowed to beat up the cards a little bit. But unfortunately, the game is going so poorly for them, they've decided to take it out on the deck. Again, it's not against the rules, but it freaks Tim out. You see, Tim is scared about losing his casino license because he can't read the cards in surveillance, and he goes downstairs to tell them to stop, then picks a fight with the only rich people in his casino. Needless to say, this has thoroughly pissed them off and they decide to leave, saving the license, but certainly demolishing his bottom line and a relationship with an important VIP high roller. A tough decision, as a casino without a license is a problem, but so is a casino without any customers. Very fine line to walk. That's Zach. Alright Zach, it's time to meet Bally. You two will be spending a lot of time together. Also, Tim and Tom hire an assistant for some reason because they have a dog or whatever. You can skip over it, really. It means very little. Just remember, the assistant is named Zach, and you're all sorted for the episode. The dog is very cute, though, so don't skip over her. Oh yeah, we had that third storyline. So the married couple jumps into a limo with Discount James Marsters and his TVs. Then they decide they want to go see about the party. We end up at the Rum Jungle, which is basically a strip club light. So we get treated to about five minutes of nondescript TV watching. Analog or digital TV doesn't seem to matter in this party. They'll watch both of them and adjust each set accordingly. Actually, tell me this doesn't look like one of the club scenes from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Could you tell the difference? Because I legitimately intercut scenes in from Buffy and Willow dancing just to see if you guys would notice. Yeah, let me know if you did in the comment section down below. This all doesn't happen in this exact sequence, of course, but I'm kind of over how jumpy the editing is in this show. Oh, but before we continue, can we focus on this dude macking on the woman using the payphone? Like, this lady paid money for this call then told that person on the call to hold up because this guy was spitting some magic game. Why can't we see their hotel experience? Instead, we're watching Spike and his girlfriends try to recruit new vampires for Buffy Season 8. Anyway, back to the TV watching, if you know what I mean. The swingers start making out, I guess. The wife is getting kind of into it, but the husband isn't so into it. He's down with it being porn on the internet, but he doesn't like the idea of porn in real life. So they go home. Whatever, I guess. That's the end of their story arc. It isn't referenced anymore in the episode, and we never discuss it again. So I'm really glad we dedicated 30% of screen time to this. Nothing on ledgers, nothing on the comp system, just this nonsense. Not worse than the frat boys, but kind of a weak improvement. Meanwhile, at the plot... Yeah, I think we should get them back. I mean, they've, lost 200, back. they've lost 200 grand. Right. You know, they gotta come back and get their stuff tonight. John the host reasons with Tim and Tom and reminds them that this is literally the only high roller they have in the casino, and that they literally can't afford to lose the only high roller you have at a casino. To John's credit, he mediates the situation very nicely. He goes to bat for his customers, but he's reasonable when considering the casino's position too. He considers the options, apologizes, takes responsibility, and tries everything he can do to make it right. It ends up being a lot of folks scrambling around to make shrimp cocktail and buy a few things, but it is cool to watch John and Dee flex their marketing muscle. 
Actually, can we get an episode just about what the hosts do? I'd watch the hell out of that. Oh yeah, and Tim and Tom hired an assistant. His name is Zach. He's now important to the story. Wait, did I already say that? Oh yeah, I did. It's easy to miss. I legitimately forgot that they hired him the first time I watched it and actually had to add it into the notes the second time that they hired him midway through the episode. Anyway, enter Zach. Zach does a little schmoozing to make Jeff look good by buying a replacement purse for his girlfriend. It turns out Kristen is his girlfriend, not his wife. Not sure how I missed that in my notes either. I gotta stop drinking those cocktails that PJ recommends when I watch this show. So, technically, I guess she did steal and lose her boyfriend's money. Also, the purse somehow looks exactly the same as the one she lost, even though apparently surveillance can't see a thing. Because I know Two Cent lost a purse like that in Vegas, and she never got the damn thing back. And that was with 2019 technology. This was filmed in 2003 or so. That said, it's kind of an anticlimactic ending to a largely solid show. Poorly edited, if you ask me. The show itself seems to strike a decent balance of customer interaction with casino operations, and most of the staff and guests are actually pretty engaging. Snarkiness aside, the Mills family was probably my favorite part of this episode, and I did like learning about the odds from Tim in the first half. John and Dee are great hosts, I just hate that they added in that third storyline when the two focuses were just fine to have in the show. Here's hoping they learn that lesson and clean things up a little more in episode 3. Alright, Miss Minnerson Sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's content and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Next time we dive into the casino, we will be driving for the third times the charm. Let's see if this show actually gets its Vegas groove on. But until next time, Spinners and Sharks, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, and I'm wishing you all strong hands and, of course, happy spinning, you guys. Viva, viva, it's a big